I think every uh, every kid growing up, they see like the kung fu movies, the Bruce Lee stuff. You know, they every kid has a desire to try to want to learn how to fight, and I was just kind of in that category. My name is Tech Sergeant Eric Farmer. I train and fight in mixed martial arts. And this is me. My record is currently four and two. Uh, I fight in the 155 or lightweight class, and uh, my specialty is uh, jujitsu, but I'm pretty well rounded. I train at a Reflex MMA uh, here in Valdosta, Georgia. It's uh, not too far from the base, so it's pretty convenient for any military person that wants to come. Um, I've been training for nearly five years now, on and off between deployments. Um, I train on average four days a week, um, usually an hour and a half to two hours every day, as much as I can. We divide stuff up throughout the week, um, normally uh, boxing on Monday, um, traditional Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu on Tuesday, kickboxing and, and no-gi jiu-jitsu on Wednesdays, um, wrestling on Thursdays with some dirty boxing, and then again uh, Friday night, which is usually a smaller class because most people aren't dedicated to come to Friday nights. It's a, it's a traditional Brazilian jiu-jitsu class, and then of course Saturday is Brazilian jiu-jitsu and, and striking. It, it's definitely overwhelming sometimes, um, and sometimes it does feel like it's just too much, especially when we have broke jets that have to be fixed and we're staying there 10, 12 hour shifts uh, trying to make time between work, um, between family and between the gym. Something, you know, something's going to be lost. You know, you don't have time for everything. Uh, there's no way I could do it without my wife. She's uh, so supportive of everything that I've ever done and she knows my passion for this. So she does everything she can to help. It's so hard uh, with the military, especially the exercises on base and my responsibilities as an NCO. Uh, there's been days where I've had to leave work and she's met me at the gym with my clothes and my gear and said, here you go, you know, give me a kiss, have fun, I'll see you when you get home. And uh, I don't think a lot of people would do that. I just want, I wanted him to be happy. I know how important it is to have a hobby and to um, you know, to do other things and I knew he wasn't very happy at work at that point too so it was like, I think important for him to have a, like a release, you know. It came really quickly to him though, jiu-jitsu especially, like he's just very good at jiu-jitsu and um, I'd, I'd been up there a couple times and watched him and I was honestly surprised like how good, not that I had doubted him but you know it was something he's never done before. I have a, I have a three-year-old daughter who's a little too young to start training right now and I have a nine-year-old son who's just recently started uh, training. He's expressed interest in it before and taken a couple classes, but never really gotten into it until recently. It's always been something that I didn't want to force on him. You know, I wanted it to be his decision, but the more he sees me compete and the love I have for it, the more he wants to get involved. And it's, it's amazing, like, seeing him come home from the gym with a big smile and saying, Dad, Dad, let me show you what I learned. Like, I have Matt's out in the garage and we go out there and he'll show me all the techniques he learned and it's such a great bonding experience. It brings us a lot closer. Uh, my first fight was several years ago, six months after I started training. The first time I, I came out with my music playing, it was a surreal experience. Um, growing up as a kid watching uh, wrestling, you, know, you always, like the music plays and then the guy comes out, and, you know, there's this big crowd, you can only imagine what that feeling is like. I came out and I tried everything I could uh, to focus just on the cage and not look around at the crowd. I walked down there and, uh, and like every hair on my body was raised up and you know, just you had this feeling in the pit of your stomach like this, this isn't real. It was definitely a one of a kind of experience. I didn't know what to expect, got into the fight, and uh, it was definitely seemed more of like a sparring match at first. I, I didn't feel that uh, that seriousness and that uh, that necessity to, to hurt him before he hurt me, and he ended up catching me and uh, ended up losing in the first round. Uh, after I lost my first fight, um, I had to take a step back. Uh, I ended up deploying not too long afterwards and didn't have an opportunity to train, but it gave me a lot of time to think. I think I thought about that loss every single day until my next fight. Um, I watched the, the video, uh, my friend had a really shaky cell phone video of it, and I, I watched it and watched it several times over and over, seeing what I did wrong and what I needed to work on, and seeing those mistakes. It was one of those things where 
I didn't hate myself for it, but I knew I was better than that. And I wanted to prove that I was better than that. So I went back and I definitely refocused and I made sure that the next time that I was going in there that I was ready, that I knew what to expect and that I knew what I had to do. It's, it's a weird feeling if you're very passionate about something, you're gonna obsess over it. And I think a little bit of healthy obsession is good. Uh, you can definitely let it take over your life and it can turn into a negative thing. But when this is something that I put so much time and effort to, you know, I'd spend time away from my family to, to do this and to get better. It's one of those things where I don't want to feel like I'm wasting my time. I want to feel like I'm doing the best that I can. And I think that with my wife putting so much support behind me and spending so much time away from me that I owe it to her as much as I owe it to myself and to my coaches. Like, I don't want to go in there and embarrass them. I guess, uh, losing my first fight by knockout was actually kind of a blessing in disguise. Um, a lot of people go out there and they're really tentative, they're really scared about getting hit because getting hit in the face hurts. But once you've experienced it, once you've lost like that, and then you wake up and you walk out of the cage under your own power, you're like, you know, that, that was it. That's the worst that this guy can do to me. Now I'm going to show him what I can do to him. But once I got back from the, the first deployment, um, like I said, I had, I had obsessed over a little bit, and I knew I wanted to fight again. I knew I wanted to prove myself. So I came back to the gym, and you know, I redoubled my efforts. I made sure that you know, when I was in there doing work, that I was doing more work than anybody else. That when people were sitting down and, and drinking water, that I was moving, that I was, I was going that one extra round. I was, instead of going against the easy guys that I knew I could beat, I was pulling aside the more experienced, stronger guys that I knew were going to give me problems because I knew that they were going to show me some stuff and I knew that they were going to make me better. So going into that fight, I knew I had something to prove and I knew that I had to win that fight. Um, once I walked into that cage and the referee said fight, there were no doubts in my mind that I was going to win. Like I knew I had prepared, I knew I had done everything. He was definitely going to lose. The fight lasted uh, into the second round. Uh, the first round, I took him down and dominated him on the ground the entire first round. We came out the second round, I hit him with a few punches and kicks, put him up against the cage. I hit him with a knee and I heard, uh, heard him lose his breath. Um, he let out a, a pretty loud groan. It was uh, in my corner, even my coaches sitting outside of the cage heard him. Um, and all of them screamed, you know, back away and, and throw punches. So I pushed off and just unleashed until the referee pulled me off. Come on side. Come on side. Grab the legs. Come on side. Uh, my head coach right now is uh, Cameron Naville. Uh, he started off as a training partner at first. He was, uh, he was the guy that you didn't want to fight. He was the one that, you know, when it came time to, to spar or it came time to do jiu-jitsu, you tried to avoid him because you knew he was going to dominate you. He was going to beat you up and, and you were going to feel uh, some pain. He's definitely the, the most experienced guy that we had. Um, definitely had that thirst for knowledge and wanted to learn. He opened his own gym and, and I followed him. And, I mean, he's, he's been an amazing friend, uh, coach, instructor, uh, cornerman for my fights. Uh, he's been there with me for, for every fight that I've had and uh, always, always supporting me, always correcting me when I make uh, little mistakes, always uh, giving me little tweaks to help improve my game. And uh, I wouldn't be where I am without him. His favorite character is Spider-Man, and and that's kind of you know he he fit the profile. Skinny dude, not really had not a lot of muscle, not a lot of technique because he hadn't trained anywhere, so he didn't really know besides the military combatives, and um, not strong, not technical, just a regular guy when he came in. Uh, and now the transition he's made, he's far from a regular guy. And over the last four or five years, he's tapped out black belts and brown belts as a white belt. And, Belt. So that just speaks to it right there, where he's come from being just a simple simple white belt with no muscle to now where he's lean, athletic, way stronger, 10 times more technical, and now he's, now he's tapping out other instructors besides me. Because I've been training with him for so long, uh, there, there's a level of trust there, and he, uh, he definitely relies on me a lot. When he's demonstrating technique, uh, I'm usually the one that he pulls aside to, to help show the other students. Um, uh, partly because I'm pretty familiar with the techniques he's teaching and also because I know how to react the way um, he's expecting me to. Um, 
after you've trained with somebody for, for five years, you get to know him pretty well. And uh, he, he relies on me because he knows that I know what he's taught me and, and he can depend on me for that. Uh, training in jiu-jitsu and uh, mixed martial arts in general is, uh, I think has definitely made me a better NCO. Um, in part because some of the guys that work for me are a little bit more afraid of me, so I don't have to, uh, I don't have to get as loud or don't have to uh, try to be intimidating. And there's just that natural knowledge that they know what I do, even though I would never actually use any of it on them. I think there's that, uh, what we'll call it, respect. <laughs> so, uh, it's and it's definitely uh, given me confidence. Um, I was always the kind of person that avoided confrontation. I was never comfortable, you know, confronting people or um, causing any kind of conflict. But one of the uh, principles of jujitsu is you put yourself in the positions that you're most uncomfortable in. And when you get so used to being in those uncomfortable positions, they're not uncomfortable anymore. They're just natural for you. So when you do get put in that position for real, it's just second nature to you. And I think. Uh, applying those same concepts to uh, my career in the Air Force and being an NCO has kind of helped me a lot. You know, if you put yourself in those uncomfortable positions, it, it will definitely help you out. And then when a serious situation does come around, it's just second nature to you. You just react. You don't have to sit there and worry about the awkwardness or uncomfortableness. You just move forward. Uh, as far as MMA goes, um, I don't have any lofty goals. Um, I am 31 years old with a career, two kids and a wife, you know, it's um, it's, a, it's a little uh, too late in the game to try to, you know, become UFC champion, but I definitely want to keep competing and become the best that I can. Um, as far as uh, jiu-jitsu, I would love to uh, keep working at it and become good enough to become a black belt and uh, say that I've, I've mastered that craft. Uh, there's really no mastering of the craft, but I think uh, you know, getting to that highest level is, is an accomplishment that you can be proud of.